Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 10th chapter in our grade 9 CBC curriculum that is circles. So, what are we going to discuss in the concept called circles and what do you mean by a circle? So, that is what we need to understand. So, the name of the topic is circles that is chapter 10. So, in the concept of circles, at the end of this module, we learn what do you mean by a circle, what do you mean by card of a circle and what are the properties of card and what do you mean by intersecting circles and how can we draw card for intersecting circles and then some applications on the properties of cards, right. So, coming to what is the definition of a circle, definition of a circle. See, if we observe the definition of circle, then I think nowhere we get the exact definition, but if you think logically, the definition of a circle is let us have a point okay let this be a fixed point let it be a fixed point and i am taking one more point let this point be some a which is at a distance of some 10 centimeters from this fixed point f like that how many number of points that can be plotted which are at 10 centimeters distance from the fixed point f see I kept one point here, can I keep one point here which is fixed and which is at a distance of 10 centimeters? Of course, I can. So, let this point be some point B which is at 10 centimeters distance. For example, I am taking one more point here, of course, from here to here the distance is going to be 10 centimeters. So, like that how many number of points that I can plot which are at exactly 10 centimeters distance from this fixed point? there are infinitely many number of fixed points that can be plotted which are at a distance of 10 centimeters from the fixed point, right. So, all these points together constitute a circle. So, how can we define a circle? A circle is defined as set of all the points, set of all the points which are equidistant from a fixed point that is what is the exact definition of a circle. So, the definition of circle is set of all the points if you want I will write here set of all the points set of all the points set of all the points which are equidistant which are at equidistant from a fixed point from a fixed point is said to be circle is said to be circle right. So, set of points which are at equidistant from a fixed point is said to be a circle. So, all these set of points which are at equidistant from one fixed point, the distance may be 10 centimeters, 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters or 1.5 or 100 centimeters does not matter. So, set of all these points which are at equidistant from a fixed point is said to be a circle. Now, there are some important facts about this circle. So, the facts are going to be, see for example, there is a point here, let this point be some f and all these points together constitute a circle, correct. Suppose if I take one point here, let this point be A, point is A and my question here is, is the point A belong to the circle or not? And second point is, for example, point B is the point, for example, this is point B, is this point B belong to the circle or not? Now, I am taking one more point suppose C, is this point C belong to the circle or not? 
So, here we need to understand and now there is a little confusion that A is obviously does not belong to the circle. So, because that point lie outside the circle. So, there itself we can understand one thing when you are giving the statement that this point lie outside the circle, lie outside the circle. Then what about point B? In the same context, we can say that that point B lie inside the circle. So, if it lie outside the circle and it lie inside the circle, it means what? Both the points does not belong to the circle. Then what are the points called the points belong to the circle? The points lying on the circumference of circle are said to be the points belong to the circle. So, what are all the points lying on the circumference of circle are said to be the points belong to the circle. And if you want, you can understand and you can read the definition of the circle. So, according to the definition of circle, set of all the points equidistant from a fixed point said to be circle. It means, what are the points called the points belong to the circle? The points lying on the circumference of the circle are said to be the points belong to the circle. Otherwise, the points either belong to its exterior or belong to interior of the circle. Right? So, this is very, very important and with the help of this discussion, we can understand one thing about center of the circle. Is the center of the circle belong to the circle? Not at all. Center of the circle belong to its interior, but not belong to the circle. So, as per the definition, this point is not lying on the circumference. This is not one of the points of the circumference. This is the point inside the circumference. So, that center of the circle does not belong to the circle. It belong to its interior. Understand? So, what are all the points called the points belong to the circle? The points lying on the circumference are said to be the points belong to the circle. Otherwise, those points belong to interior or exterior of the circle. right? And one more important thing is, the circle in which it is drawn, the plane in which it is drawn, divide into three disjoint set of points. Three disjoint set of points. What do you mean by disjoint? Means there is no common portion. So, here what are those three disjoint set of points? First set of points lying outside the circle, second one set of points lying on the circle and the third one set of points lying inside the circle. right? So, this is what according to the definition of a circle you need to understand. right? And coming to the next part of this circle that is, suppose if I am drawing one circle, this is one circle and this is the center of the circle. I am taking two points on the circumference, any two points on the circumference. So, this is one point on the circumference, let it be A and this is second point on the circumference, let it be B and this is what is the line segment joining both the points on the circumference. So, the line segment joining any two points on the circumference of circle is called chord of the circle. What do you call that? Chord. Chord of the circle means what? A line segment joining any two points on the circumference is said to be a chord. See, this is one chord. Of course, this can be a chord, this can be a chord and this can be a chord, this can be also a chord and if this is a chord, especially when, when you observe this chord PQ passing through the center and we already named this PQ. What is that name? That is diameter of the circle. So, out of all the cards, the diameter is the longest card. So, what is the longest card of the circle? Longest card of the circle is the diameter. Longest card of the circle is the diameter. Please do remember this. Longest card of the circle is diameter of the circle and remaining all the cards will be smaller than in length, smaller than the diameter of the circle. Now, we will try to understand what are all the properties, the very important properties of card. So, let me take one card. Okay. So, for example, this is a circle and this is a card of the circle. This is center of the circle, let it be O is the center of the circle, A, B is the card. 
Suppose if I drop one perpendicular from center to a card, let this point be M. So, how does this, how does this perpendicular drawn from the center to the card divide the card? So, any guesses and how to divide? Otherwise, how do you understand this, for example, O M about A B? I do not know. So, let us check. I am going to join O and A as well as O and B. Since it is perpendicular, this is also 90 degrees. There are two right angle triangles formed. What kind of right angle triangles they both are? See, right angle is equal to right angle, hypotenuse equal to hypotenuse because both are radii and O M is the common side for both the two triangles. So, it means by R H S congruence, triangle O A M and O B M are congruent by C P C T A M is equal to M B. So, here we obtain one of the very important property of card that is if you drop one perpendicular from the center to any card, if you drop a perpendicular from the center to any card, then it bisects the card. So, the card will be bisected by the perpendicular drawn from the center. So, that is what is the very important property. Of course, this property is useful and can be used in many theorems also. So, this is the very basic important property of the card. So, this is the first property of the card and coming to the second property of the card, I am going to take one circle again, right. So, this is the center of the circle. This is one card, let this card be suppose A, B and this is one more card, let this card be some P, Q. I know that these two cards are equal in length means P Q is equal to A B, P Q is equal to A B and center is equal to O. Now, A B is equal to P Q, I am going to join O A B as well as O P Q, then there are two triangles formed, what kind of triangles both are? So, these two triangles are congruent triangles by R H S sorry uh, S S S congruence because these two are radii, these two are radii already P Q is equal to A B. Since these two triangles are congruent by C P C D, this angle is equal to this angle. So, what, what do you mean by this angle and what do you mean by this angle? So, this is the angle called angle subtended by this card and this angle is called angle subtended by this card A B. So, here these two angles are equal, what kind of cards both are? Those two cards are equal. So, here we need, uh, we need to understand one thing that equal cards subtends equal angles at the center, equal cards subtends equal angles at the center. It means equal cards makes equal angles at the center and conversely, for example, these two angles are equal, what can you infer about these two cards? If these two angles are equal at the same time, we can prove these two triangles are congruent by SAS congruence, right. So, these two triangles are congruent by SAS congruence, then by CPC2 we can say that PQ is equal to AB. What does it mean? The converse of the statement is also true. So, finally, if two cards are equal, then they subtend equal angles at the center. Conversely, if two cards subtends equal angles at the center, then those two cards are equal. So, this is very important property, the second property of the card. Did you understand? So, first property of the card is, if you drop any perpendicular from the center to a card, then it bisects the card. And the second property of the card is, equal card subtends equal angles at the center. Otherwise, if two cards subtends equal angles at the center, then those two cards are equal. So, this is about the second property of the card. And then, uh, if you think logically about uh, you know the other parts, other uh, properties of the card, I would tell you one more very important thing here is, this is one circle, this is another circle. So, these two circles are called two intersecting circles and this is the center of the first circle and this is the center of the second circle. 
this is the line segment joining both the centers. So, this center is equal to sum O, this center equal to O dash. These points of intersection are A, B are points of intersection of both the circles. So, when you join both the points of intersections, then you will get a card. So, this card is said to be the common card for both the two circles, common card for both the two circles. But here the point is the very very important point that we are going to discuss that the line segment, the line segment joining, the line segment joining centers of two intersecting circles two intersecting circles, the line segment joining centers of two intersecting circles bisects the common card, bisects the common card perpendicularly. bisects the common chord perpendicularly. This is what is the very important property of two intersecting circles. See here O, O dash are the centers of two intersecting circles. Circle O and circle O dash both are intersecting at two points A and B. Here we need to prove that this O, O dash bisects A, B perpendicularly. So, what do you mean by that? You need to prove that angle O M A is equal to 90 degrees and also we need to prove that A M is equal to M B and please do remember the statement. The line segment joining centers of two intersecting circles O O dash bisects the common chord perpendicularly. This is the common chord. This O O dash bisects the common chord perpendicularly. So, in order to prove this statement, we need to understand one thing that you will have to join O A as well as B O dash and A O dash as well as O B. So, after joining them, you can find out two triangles. What are those two triangles? O A O dash, O B O dash, right? So, O A O dash as well as O B O dash, what kind of triangles both are? See here O A O dash and O B O dash both the two triangles are congruent triangles. You know why? O A O dash triangle O A O dash and triangle O B O dash. In these two triangles O A is equal to O B because both are ready of the same circles and O O dash is equal to O O dash that is the common side for both the two triangles and A O dash is equal to B O dash that is the radius of the second circle. So, these two triangles are congruent by S S S congruence. So, triangle O A what is this O A O dash right? So, this is O A O dash is congruent to triangle O B O dash by S S S congruence. Since these two triangles are congruent by C P C D, we can say that this angle is equal to this angle, correct. Now, I am going to consider these two triangles. What are those two triangles? O A M as well as O B M. In these two triangles, O A is equal to O B this angle is equal to this angle just now we proved and O M is the common side for both the two triangles. So, therefore, triangle O A M is congruent to O B M, triangle O A M is congruent to triangle O B M by S A S congruence. Since these two triangles are congruent by C P C T, what did you observe here? by C B C D A M is equal to M B. So, this part is equal to this part A M is equal to M B and what is the second thing? Second thing here is 
this angle is equal to this angle by CBCT. Let this is x and this is also x. So, we can say that x plus x is equal to 180 degrees. Why x plus x equal to 180? Because that is a linear pair. So, x plus x equal to 180. So, 2x is equal to 180. Then x is equal to how much? x is equal to 90 degrees. What is that x there? x is equal to angle O M A R A M O. So, this angle is equal to 90 degrees. So, with the help of this first and second informations, we can say that the line segment joining centers of two intersecting circles bisects the common chord perpendicularly. Understand? The line segment joining centers of two intersecting circles bisects the common chord perpendicularly. So, this way we can answer this. And coming to very important property of cards, what is that very important property and you can call it as central angle theorem also. What is that? Central angle theorem. What is this central angle theorem? For example, this is a circle okay. and I am taking for example, this is the center of the circle, let it be O and this is one card, let this card be AB e is subtending an angle at the center that is AOB and taking one more point here, let this one more point is P and joining AP as well as BP. Then this is what is the angle made by this arc AB at a point on the remaining part of the circle, at a point on the remaining part of a circle. Here we need to understand that what is the statement of this central angle theorem. Angle subtended by an arc at the center, I am going to write the statement here. So, the statement is going to be angle subtended angle subtended by an arc at the center at the center is double the angle is double the angle subtended is double the angle subtended by the same arc by the same arc at any point at any point on the remaining part of the circle on the remaining part of the circle. This is what is called central angle theorem, right? Angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle. So, what did you understand from this statement? What is the angle subtended by an arc at the center? This is what the angle subtended by an arc at the center and this is what is the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle. Remaining part of the circle means anywhere on this part. Okay? This is the arc is making an angle. So, other than this part A, B, this side. So, this is what is the part that is what called remaining part of the circle. So, here we need to prove that angle subtended by an arc at the center means angle A, O, B. So, angle A, O, B is double the angle means two times subtended by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle that is angle A, P, B. This is what we need to prove. So, angle A, O, B is equal to 2 angle A, P, B. How is that possible to prove this statement? It is very much easier that you need to just join P and O, join P and O and extend it up to one point, let it be some M. Um, let me uh, take this part the, because A O B divided into two parts by O M. Let this part be X and this part be some Y. Okay, that is X and that is Y. If you once observe triangle, there are two triangles. If I am not wrong, A O P is one triangle, B O P is another triangle. In triangle A O P, 
O A is equal to O B because both are radii. If O A is equal to O B, then that triangle is said to be an isosceles triangle. So, in isosceles triangle, two sides are equal as well as the angles opposite to the equal sides are also equal. So, it means the angle opposite to this side is this, is angle opposite to this side is this. So, it means this angle is equal to this angle, correct. So, this angle is equal to some A, this angle is also equal to A, right. And similarly, coming to this side, O P B triangle, same way these two are radii, therefore, this angle is equal to this angle, okay. So, let this angle is B, this angle is also equal to B. Now, if you observe triangle O P A, I am just drawing triangle O P A here. So, this is what is triangle O P A, right. So, O P A, here this angle is A, this angle is also equal to A and already this is extended and this was named as X. If you observe by angles some property as well as exterior angle property of triangle, one exterior angle of a triangle is equal to sum of interior opposite angles. It means the value of X is equal to A plus A that is 2A. Similarly, this side when you take B plus B is equal to Y and Y is equal to 2B, right. So, X is equal to 2A and Y is equal to 2B. When you add both of them, you get X plus Y is equal to 2A plus 2B. 2A plus 2B can be written as 2 times A plus B, right. So, X plus Y is equal to 2 times A plus B, but what is X plus Y here? X plus Y is equal to angle AOB. So, angle A O B is equal to 2 times A plus B. A plus B is going to be angle A P B is equal to 2 angle A P B. So, this way we can prove this statement. What do you call this? This is what called central angle theorem. Please do remember the statement which is very important and useful and of course, it is a very important application also, right. So, central angle theorem states that angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle, right. So, this is what is the way of proving this statement and depending on this, basing on this, we have very important results also. So, we will be discussing the results in the coming module. Hope you understand and enjoy the class. Thank you.